Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Just another manic Monday. Wish it was Sunday. Michael Savage reporting for duty. Here I am on the front line facing the Mad Hatter Party. We all know about the lunatic from uh, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson with the crazy cowgirl hat. I called her the Mad Hatter who, because she said the White House is filled with white supremacists. I mean, on the, on the face of it, makes her a racist, to be honest with you. To say that the White House is filled with white supremacists is about as racially charged as you can get. So I called her a Mad Hatter on my Twitter feed and on michaelsavage.com. But, you know, I realize it's not limited to her. Here we have Pelosi, who can't finish a sentence, and she's not removed under the 25th Amendment because it doesn't apply to senators. But if she's not a Mad Hatter, I'd like to know who is. Then we have uh, another one, Sherrod Brown, saying the White House looks too much like a white supremacist operation. Another Mad Hatter. Is there anyone in the Democrat Party who should not wear a synthetic cowgirl hat? I think we should start a petition drive and raise money for these hats for them and send them to the Democrat Party because, frankly, they all need a cowgirl hat. They're all the same as Representative Frederica Wilson. They all wear the cowgirl hat. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to ask you some questions. I saw a a number of questions over the weekend in the New York Post from the former CEO of National Public Radio, who told us all about liberal media bias, like we didn't know anything about it. But he he posed some questions that I thought were interesting. Are you ready for them? The growing gap between uh, Dems and uh, Republicans. Immigrants today are a burden on our country because they take our jobs, housing, and health care was one question. Poor people have it easy because they can get government benefits without doing anything in return was another question. The government today can't afford to do much more to help the needy, another one. Most corporations make a fair and reasonable amount of profit was another question posed to both Dems and Repubs, as were these. The best way to ensure peace is through military strength. Government regulation of business usually does more harm than good. These are all Pew Research poll questions. Another two were, government is always wasteful and and inefficient. And finally, homosexuality should be discouraged by society. And they show the changing responses amongst reds and blues. Now, I could ask you these questions, and I may do that later, but I'll tell you the question that's really bothering me because I've asked it of some people who are not Republicans and they can't answer it. Maybe you can. Can anyone listening to this show tell me what Trump has done that makes you hate him so much? Because I can't understand it. I'll I'll say it again. I was in a bagel shop over the weekend. I've gone on two long bike rides. I've decided to live rather than just drift off into eternity. I always bicycle, but I'm doing much longer rides now. So anyway, I I get there early in the morning, and I'm having a bagel in my own quiet. Actually, I was having a Bialy, which is i never seen in San Francisco before. No one even knows what it is. Out here, they have sugar bagels, which they think are bagels, but they're not. So I had a Bialy with some salmon on it and a cup of coffee, and there was a nice couple. They said, keep up the good work. We love you. So we started to talk in this little bagel deli, and I said, can you tell me why they hate him so much? Can you? He said, I asked my friends who, quote, are liberals, and he said, they, they mumble, they can't answer me. He said, there's nothing specific. No one seems to have an answer. So I said, I'm going to do that Monday, which is because I, I need the answer. I want to know why Trump is hated so much. I know he defeated Hillary, and I know that that's part of the animus being driven by the vermin in the media. And I don't use that term lightly. I truly believe there are humans who are lower than insects. And I don't have to go into details, but when I see that it is the media that has single-handedly destroyed this society by dividing and conquering, by running the most despicable stories about anyone they can get their hands on, 
I will say to you that insects have done less damage to the society than most people in the media. So I ask you, is it all character assassination that is being inflicted upon Trump? What is it that he has actually done that generates so much hatred amongst his enemies? And I don't have the answer. Do you? Now, I'd rather have some progressive leftist Bernie people call because I don't know the answer. I promise not to get insulting. I promise to treat you kindly. I promise to treat you as a snowflake because I know you're used to being treated so kindly because I don't want you to blow a whistle and call the ACLU or cry or break down. Uh, I'm going to listen to you. I want you to tell the millions of people who listen to this show on radio stations and listen to the show on streams, on, on iPhones and whatever around the world, would you tell them what Trump has done that is so horrible? Because I don't know. I mean, I know, always known there's been a divide between liberals and conservatives. I get that. But Trump is not actually a conservative. If you analyze Trump's policies and positions, he is more liberal than John F. Kennedy, incidentally. You don't know that, but okay, I'll tell it to you again. But if you don't want to take the bait on that question, I can move on. And I think I will. I think I will move on. I mean, you can call me at 855 407 I saw an article on the secret family making billions from the opioid crisis, and I had heard of the Sackler name before. And the article was intriguing. It was in Esquire magazine, and it, heads, it headlines this way. You're aware America is under siege, fighting an opioid crisis that has exploded into a public health emergency. You've heard of OxyContin, the pain med to which countless patients have become addicted. But do you know that the company that makes Oxy and reaps the billions of dollars in profits it generates is owned by only one family? And the family is called the Sacklers, S-A-C-K-L-E-R. If you've been in any museums in America or around the world, you will see Sackler's name all over everything. The Sackler family, family is legendary in museum circles for their pursuit of naming rights. There's a Sackler staircase at Berlin's Jewish Museum, a Sackler escalator at the Tate Modern, a Sackler crossing in Kew Gardens, a popular species of pink roses named after a Sackler. So is an asteroid. The, new in, the newly installed Sackler Courtyard at London's Victoria and Albert Museum is the latest addition to an impressive portfolio. The Sackler name is no less prominent among the emerald quads of higher education. So uh, did you know there's one family that controls the, the oxy business? You didn't know that, huh? And you thought it was the guy in the ghetto who was the drug dealer. Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> just shows you what you know, and it just shows you what public relations can do for a family, you know, or what it can do to a president. Now, many of you are calling and saying they hate Trump because I don't want those callers. I do not want people who are on Trump's side to call. I, w I would find that to be not interesting radio. I really only want to get calls from the other side, if you don't mind. I have an enormous audience of crossovers who may not like me or my politics. Actually, they probably like me, but not my politics. Uh, I don't know what they do. Who knows? With millions of people, you don't really know. I want those who hate Trump to call me and tell me why. Would you please tell me why? But would you please be as specific as possible? That's all. And, you know, you don't have to get mad at me to do it. Just do it. Get up and say, okay, Savage, here's what I think. And that's it. And then I'm going to cover another big story today. Remember last week I went on a tear against the group of Orthodox Jews in Israel who won't serve in the military? But worse than that, they were rioting in the street. Well, I didn't know which group they were, and I have the names of the group. They are not as prominent as you may think. It's not all Orthodox who won't serve. It's only some of them. And they are not Chabad, by the way. They are a minority Orthodox fringe group in Israel that is disturbing the peace, cursing out soldiers. They have even been denounced by all the ultra-Orthodox head rabbis. And what's horrible here is that people around the world now think that all people dressed in black uh, are of the type that will not serve in the military. That is not true. There's a great story of a brave Israeli girl, a woman soldier, sorry, girl, I... Of another era. There's a female, let's put it that way, female. It's hard for me to use it because that's like biological. And I put it up on my website. Oh, God, did they drop it already? Every time Monday morning comes around, the story I want to talk about is already gone. 
Karen, if you're listening, would you please find the kickboxing Israeli soldier who is surrounded by orthodox rabbi boys who are spitting at her and she's fighting them off. It's dropped already, gone. Yeah, replace anything, just give it to me. So anyway, that's the story. We're going to talk about these topics. There is another one related to that on michaelsavage.com, which is uh, Mad Hatter says White House filled with white supremacists. You know who the Mad Hatter is, don't you? The next story is female Israeli soldier uses martial arts. Oh, there it is, to fight off crowd of ultra-orthodox demonstrators. But it's a gen- what you put up was a picture of eight women, not her fighting them. Maybe it was an image we can't use, but you'll see the girls in Israel all serve in the military, unlike the girls in America who serve Harvey Weinstein or Harvey Weinstein's generic. Female Israeli soldier uses martial arts to fight off a crowd of ultra-orthodox demonstrators. It's a pretty frightening uh, story there. Okay, so why do you hate him? Please don't take Andrew from ABC who says they hate him because I'm telling you, Jim, again, till I'm blue in the face. Stop taking regular callers. I don't want them. I want the opposition, Jim. Now let's take someone who knows why he hates Trump. Don't tell me why they hate him. Tell me why you hate him. Make it personal. Joe on WBOB line one. Why do you hate Donald Trump? What has he actually done? No, I don't hate Donald Trump. I was telling the call screener that my son hates Trump, and now being that I voted for Trump, he hates me. Okay, and according to what he tells me, he said, I voted for Trump because I'm a racist. I'm just saying Trump is a racist. His whole generation, I mean, he, he texts me. These- okay, okay, Joe, listen to me. Not a good caller for me. Bad caller. I am not in a bar having a general conversation. This is a radio show heard around the world. If it has no verve, it has no nerve. If it has no nerve, you have some nerve to try to talk on this show. If I have to talk in rhyme in order to keep my mind, I'll keep doing it. But I'm not taking a call unless it's from a person who hates Trump who can actually tell me why. That's what I want. That's the kind of call that will make me interested in the show and make you interested in the show. So before we go back to 855-407-282, my phone number, uh, we have, you know, Nancy Pelosi and and her uh, other mad hatters keep saying they want to impeach Trump. And then they want Trump gone. They say under the 25th Amendment that if a person's not mentally competent, they want him gone. Do you think Pelosi should be removed under the 25th? Or the mad hatter with the red cow? cowboy hat should be removed i think a lot of them should be removed but the problem is the 25th amendment does not apply to the senate unfortunately so i think that we need a pelosi amendment introduced into the uh, into the senate the pelosi amendment would be something along the lines of a 25th for those in congress who are showing clear signs of a lack of mental acuity the inability to finish a sentence those who called robert Mueller mother those who can't finish a thought, those who get brain freezes, anyone exhibiting those signs should be removed under the Pelosi Amendment. What do you think about that? Okay, 855 We have a few liberals calling. Good. That's a good one. Uh, WABC, Cheska, line four. Why do you hate Donald Trump? We had our only hope that the Supreme Court is going to turn liberal. Now it's going to be conservative for the next 200 years. That's the only reason. Uh, that's why you hate him personally? No. I, uh, we and the liberal community hate him because of that. But what do you expect from a president who's not a left-winger but to appoint someone who's not a left-winger? How do you think it works? We hoped Hillary was going to win and she's going to turn the court liberal, but that's not going to happen for the next 200 years. It's over. Well, no, I wouldn't say 200 years, but a very long time. It is over, and if very, two very more of time, yeah. and if two more and, and if two more of the fossils should uh, receive their their final reward, he gets two more. He's going to get two more, absolutely, no question about that. So, Cheskal, why do you think a liberal Supreme Court would be good for America? Um, what, like, what issue to you personally means the most? Which issue? Um, equal rights, uh, gay rights. So this is all about sexuality again? That's all that's on your mind? It's part of it. It's not everything. It's part of it. Can you explain to me how homosexuals are discriminated against in this country today? Um, I wouldn't say they're discriminated. 
but it would have been better if the court would have turned uh, liberal um, for the next uh, generation. But well, then, then, then explain to the general audience how much more, how many more rights can gay people have? What don't they have that they want? Um, it, it's getting, it's get, the interesting part is even with, we have our conservative, another conservative and the judge, it is getting better than people. They won't say that it's getting better, but we truly believe that it is getting better. And what's getting better? The uh, rights uh, for gay people. But what more rights do you need? I don't understand. Explain to me what a gay person cannot do today that they would do if the court was eight, eight to zero or liberal. What would they get? Just as I thought, you see, it's it's not specific. Here is an example again. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. There's no reason behind that one. So if you have a real reason you hate Trump that can be expressed, I would appreciate hearing it. Because for the life of me, I know that she didn't win. I get that. I know he's a guy who's very aggressive. He has a, an abrasive style. He's insulting. I get all of that. But what has he actually done is what I want to know that generates your hatred. I'll be right back to take your calls. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. In Attention, progressive, liberal, communist, socialist, Antifa. Can you tell us why you hate Trump? We have one caller right now, line seven. Fire away, Kay. Go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I'm calling. I can't specifically speak to why other people hate uh, uh, Donald Trump, but I would say that in my community, as a black woman, you know, if we're being intellectually honest, we can say and acknowledge that in America, there is kind of this epidemic of, of elevating mediocrity. And, you know, it was fun watching Donald Trump, you know. As so so you, you don't hear Vivaldi music when Trump speaks. What music do you hear? What, what background music plays when he speaks? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. After the hour, heat wave, heat wave, heat wave. World Series could be the hottest ever. 100 degrees expected for game one. Uh, I guess I won't sleep tonight thinking about that. I'm such an avid sports fan with what's going on in the world. I can't wait to see a bunch of men running around in striped suits uh, hitting a ball. But okay, that's the world I live in. Sports crazy. Here on the West Coast, another heat wave. We thought it was over. Now it's 20 degrees hotter than normal. I guess it's that old global warming again. No, not. It was hotter actually in 1870, but don't tell that <laughs> to the fake environmentalists who don't study history. But let's get to reality here. My audience has a large crossover listenership. It's not strictly one side of the aisle. I suppose that's because I do a lot of different things. I'm not stuck only on politics. I do news, views, reviews. I have a very strict, I have a very strong background in health the environment and whatnot that nobody can refute. So maybe they say, well, okay, the guy at least has you know, put his money where his mouth is all those years, and maybe he's right. But they hate Trump. Even though they may listen to me, they hate Trump, and I don't know where the hatred comes from. And I'm trying to find out today. I actually want to touch on that today for a while. So I've asked audience members to call. Don't tell me why others or why you think they hate him. I want libs who actually hate him to call. And I got loads of them. There's only one open line, by the way. So let's start on WABC in New York. Joe, go ahead. You have the floor. Speak. Yeah, I hate Trump. He's a divider. He's a punk by New York City standards. Oh, wait, wait, please. Now, you use a phrase like, like divider. Let's take them one at a time. 
Didn't Obama come to power by dividing and conquering? Let, let's be realistic about it. Oh, no, I, I, I don't agree with you. I think he brought more people together. I, okay, but sir, I, the first thing he did was he had that fake summit between the police in Boston where he divided blacks against whites. Hold on now. From my point of view, Obama triggered a race war against cops by coming up with a false narrative that they were hunting down and shooting minorities, which was a lie. So you could say that the same thing in this case would apply to him. Stylistically, Obama was probably the smoothest, most articulate president in the history of this nation. And that's, I think, why he was able to be a bigot and a divider and get away with it. Obama than any other uh, president. So, so much for that talking point. But you asked me about Trump. Yeah. Right. So you said you said he's a bigot and a divider. And I'm saying so is Obama. So what else has he done that you don't like? Hello? Hung up. Bingo. See, this is the problem. I've seen this over and over again in my radio career. When you have a discussion, you let one side speak, you let the other side respond, then they speak, then you respond. But if you hang up, it means you lost the argument. Do you understand that? It means you, you're a snowflake. It means you melted. The minute you're actually asked to answer a question and you were not amongst your friends, in a safe environment where you all agree with each other, there was no answer to the question. See, I'm trying to isolate it. What is the purpose of my isolating it? Because maybe we can stop the hatred in the country. I'll tell you right now, the hatred's not going to have him impeached. The hatred's not going to remove him from office. The hatred's going to hurt the nation more than it's going to hurt Trump. That's all I can tell you. You see what I'm saying? So let's try another one. WNTW in Virginia, line five. Go ahead. Why do you hate Trump? Yes, uh, Mr. Savage, thank you for taking my call. Well, my number one reason is he, uh, he is a liar. Uh, we could spend the rest of the rest of your show talking about his lies. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, not less than two minutes ago, you told a lie. So uh, we can bring that up. When did uh, President Obama... Well, you're, a, you're an expert on the truth, I can tell by listening to you, that you know the truth and no one else does. That I can tell just by listening to your voice. <laughs> I understand you want to spend the conversation, but let's let's keep it no, on. No, no, no. I'm going to sit here and let you crap on me because you're 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 the all-knowing Paul from WNTW in Virginia. You just told a lie. You want me to tell you what the lie was? Yeah, sure. You tell me what the lie was. You said it was okay that uh, that cops were shooting unarmed black men in the back. He never said that. It was Barack Obama who started the war against police in this nation no, it was by, in, by intimating that, that cops were out hunting and shooting minorities for no reason. And I stand by those words. That is exactly what Obama and Holder did. Well, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. Let's get on. Well, thank Let's God you're willing to say it's my opinion instead of hating me. I'm not hating you. If I hated you, I would not be calling your show. But let's get on Trump. I'm, don't try to deflect. First of all, thousands of Muslims celebrating 9-11 in New Jersey. That is a lie. Biggest electoral landslide since Reagan. That is a lie. Mexico is going to pay for the wall when we build the wall. That is a lie. My second thing, uh, and probably my biggest, is that uh, he is a hypocrite. I can't stand hypocrites. I live in Virginia Beach, and I work with a lot of active military. Trump has been trashing a lot of military people that he does not agree with while he was too yellow to serve when he was called. I cannot stand yellow bellies. And he is a yellow belly, and he is a liar. You want All right. I, you know what, Paul? I'm not going to sit here and refute everything that you said because some of it is irrefutable, some of it is true, some of it is smearing by innuendo. But I will leave you with a question rather than a statement, Paul. Why do you listen to this program? To laugh at me? No, 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 no. No, no, because, matter of fact, your, um, your screener asked me, was I a liberal? And I said, no, not really. I'm kind of an independent. Like I said, I live in Virginia, and I voted for uh, uh, McDonald. He's a Republican because I thought he was a better candidate than Creedese, which ran against him. I am an independent thinker. I run and I vote for the person not the party. And in this particular case, you cannot make any excuses for Trump, Michael. I wait, wait, you don't hear, wait, hold on now. I most, asked you a question. I'm not, I'm so, wait, let me start from the top. I am not Sean Hannity. I don't sit here shining Trump's boots day and night. You know that, don't you? Yes, yes, I do know that. And I congratulate you for that. Thank you, sir. 
Well, no, but what I'm saying is, I mean, what's fair is fair. And I wanted to know where the animus comes from. In your case, I can hear it. And some of it I agree with, by the way, Paul. Some of it I don't. And, and I mean, it would be easy for me to say, well, so is Obama this, but I'm not going to do that. I will leave you with one thought because you probably are a very clear thinking man now that you've, you've had a chance to speak. You know, even the ACLU and the liberals said that Obama created the greatest surveillance state the world had ever seen. Are you aware of that? Um, I'm aware of that accusation. I don't know if it's true or not, but yeah, he created the biggest George, spying I'm... on citizens in the world. Barack Obama did it with the NSA. They were spying randomly on every American if they wanted to without court order. And yet he got away with it for a number of reasons. And that's because the cowards and the punks in the media never called Obama on that particular point. Now, to me, that was one of the most egregious things he has done. The spying on Americans is really crossing a red line that should never have been crossed. And I think that damage needs to be undone. But you sound like a fair-minded independent as I try to be. And I don't know whether you're a man who believes in anything more than what goes on in this world. Do you actually believe in, in God or anything like that? Definitely. Yes, I do. Are you a faithful Christian or a Muslim? No, I am. Uh, uh, I consider myself a Christian. Um, I'm trying to get better in my life. But, but, but Michael. Um, no, no, I'm, hey, look, I'm not here judging you. Man, I am, I am judging me every day, not you. I don't have time to judge callers. I judge myself more harshly than God will when I when I meet him. I'll tell you that right now. So I want to just ask you that to see where you're coming from. I'm going to send you God, faith, and reason coming out in a few weeks, and I hope that you'll be a loyal listener for years to come, and I thank you. Please stay on the line. See, now that's an example from me to the audience of what I want in radio. You start out with a little heat between testosterone-driven men, and then it ends with buying each other a verbal beer. That's what I'm talking about. That's the good stuff. That's what talk radio should be doing. I'm going to tell you right now, I know there are people who hate Trump, and some of them are even people who voted for him, by the way. I didn't, I didn't ask you that one. Jim, are there any Trump voters who hate him? Yeah, well, we're going to hear them too. And now with the taxes, where do you see what comes up then when he starts raising taxes on people earning a certain amount of money? And if you think they're going to only raise taxes on those making a million dollars or more, you're wrong. They're going to raise taxes on anyone making 100000 or 200000 or more. I can guarantee you they're going to hammer everybody in this country. How do you think they're going to pay for the biggest budget blowout in the history of America? Who do you think is going to pay for it? Here you are the Republicans who pretended to be fiscal conservatives who have blown the budget up beyond any payment. You can never pay this stuff back. So they're a bunch of liars, a pack of phony liars. Who do we who do we rely upon? Remember, I think you got to remember something. I may be running the show as the talk show host, but at the end of the day, I'm just a citizen like you. I'm no different than you are. I have to pay my taxes. I have to listen to these liars. I have to get so angry at the television when I see them speak that I don't know what to do. And then I have to go about my everyday life. You understand that? In that, in that sense, we're all the same. We're in the same boat. When have you met a politician who ever told you the truth? Do you know any? If you know someone, you send their names over to me. I'd like to find out who they are and have them on the show. So who do you have faith in? At the end of the day, who do you have faith in? Now, that's not, held it, that's not diminishing from the question, which I'm going to keep out there. Why do you hate Trump is what I want to know. I'm trying to find out why you hate him. Now, why we're talking about that, I'm going to throw out a few others. Should class action lawsuits be banned, and should class action lawyers be tried under RICO? Now, I know it's a loaded question because that's what I think should be done. I believe that any nation that permits class action lawyers to bring down and break companies based on almost nothing. I was thinking about the Johnson & Johnson talc case. A woman sued in one life, hundreds of millions of dollars, claiming that the talcum powder gave her ovarian cancer. Now, it was based upon... Um, it was based on false, false uh, testimony. A California judge tossed a $417 million talc cancer verdict against Johnson & Johnson. It was by a woman who claimed she developed ovarian cancer after using its talc-based products like Johnson's baby powder for feminine hygiene. The case was thrown out. Now, I believe lawyers who practice these class action lawyers are no different in fact, much worse than the Crips of the Bloods. 
I believe class action lawyers are the true cr- criminal class in America. I personally believe class action law law should be changed so it doesn't permit to be a be, and number two because first of all most people get no money out of these deals. The lawyers steal all the money. No matter what the class is that you sign on, you get pennies, they get millions. So it's a scam run by these huge law firms that litigate every company in the United States of America trying to break them into a settlement. It's criminality. And that's why I think class action lawsuits should be banned. And I believe class action lawyers should immediately be indicted under RICO statutes. And I'll go a step further. All of their ill-gained money over the last 30 years from any and all class action lawsuits, whether it was given to their daughters, their grandmothers, or their grandchildren, should be seized by the federal government. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. the Savage Nation, I'm going to go back to the main question that I, I raised earlier, and I have a lot of great callers, which I really enjoy, because I think conversation is the key to talk radio, rather than just didactic, you know, here's what I think kind of stuff. But, you know, I was looking at a um, some pictures coming out of the Middle East, and I see refugees running. And you know what they're carrying? They're carrying, their, uh, you know, like in a cart. What do they carry? They're carrying a, like a, a, a sleeping mat, and I realized everybody on Earth Needs a few basic things, including a mattress. And yes, I'm going to go into an ad right now because it relates to Casper mattress, which I have, because the Casper mattress helps me get the best night's sleep, period. Once you try Casper, you're going to love yours as much as I do love mine. I wouldn't switch at all. And switching is a no-brainer. It's a higher quality, more affordable price. It's better than anything you may have. Trust me, get rid of that old mattress. Casper ships right to your door for free in a small box that you'll say, I don't know how they did it. They'll pick it up if you don't love it, and you can have it for many, many nights for free, 100 nights for free in your house. Breakthrough design, superior quality. Sleeping on a mattress is the best way to try it, trust me. Put Casper to the test in your own home for 100 nights for free. Go to Casper.com, use code SAVAGE for $50 towards the purchase of your Casper mattress. That's Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and you will get $50 towards the purchase of this mattress. And Casper.com is the address, terms, and conditions to apply. So we're asking today why you hate Trump so much. JG on WABC, why do you hate Trump so much? Hi, Dr. Savage. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. Thank you for taking my call. I don't hate the President of the United States. Um, I honor the office, and whoever sits in it should have a chance at least to the job. I don't feel this man is taken particularly Seriously, he hasn't filled the positions in the White House. He goes golfing every weekend. Anytime there's a flight or feels... Okay, you're, you're breaking up. You're saying he doesn't take the job seriously enough for you. He golfs too much. Okay. KSFO, Don, why do you hate Donald Trump? Yes, hi. I'd like to first say that I'm a moderate independent uh, from New Jersey, so his brashness doesn't bother me at all. And if he weren't the president, his behavior wouldn't bother me at all. But I, I have a hard time supporting him. I'm fortunate to have a great family who taught me great values and virtues to live by. And this man violates all of them on a daily basis. I've tried to find the good in him. I've tried to be objective. But he never ceases to let me down on his, the way that he handled himself. But, Don, you're a rational man. What has he actually done? Bottom line. Well, well, number, the number one thing that he's done that you hate, what is it? Well, he's a hypocrite, and he doesn't tell the truth, like your previous caller uh, had mentioned. And he's just not a role model for uh, children of this country. And as the leader of our country and the free world... You know, I read a story today which says Sessions unleashes organized crime task force on MS-13. Isn't that a good thing, that they're actually getting those tattooed gang members rounded up and kicked out of the country? Isn't that one good thing? Well... I'm not familiar with that story, but sure. Well, you're not familiar with it because Jake Tapperhead and Wolf the Lying Blitzer never told you the story. 
I don't watch. But our FBI and our local police have now been given a green light to break down doors and round up illegal aliens who are members of the most violent gang the country has ever seen. Isn't that one good thing? Not what we're discussing. Do you believe that President Trump? See, here we go. Now, see, here we go. Rabbinical. Now, you'll ask me a question. I'm trying to give you something that you don't even know he is doing that he's following up on. And no one wants to hear it because the liars in the media don't even show you the story. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hear Blue Monday. Got to work, like a slave all day. It is The Savage Nation, immigration, spending, Corporations, military, regulation of individuals and the government, homosexuality, guns, God. All of these topics divide America, in case you don't know it. Uh, 98% of the media is liberal according to, what's the number? Five to one, rather. That's 81, six, about very high. 80% of people in the media are hardcore liberals, according to a man who ran uh, the uh, National Public Radio. He admits the liberal bias in the media is so strong that it's impossible to hear the other side. And he, he, re, he reflects on the demagoguery from the left and the right. And he said the attacks wouldn't be so successful if our media, he mean the attacks on the media, would not be so successful if our media institutions had not failed us as greatly as they had. And so now we come to Trump and why you hate him. And the reason I'm doing it is because for the life of me, I mean, I know he's controversial for a number of reasons. I know his style is off-putting. Uh, I have a similar style. I'm very, I can be very insulting. I can be very uh, uh, aggressive. I can be brash. I try not to be, by the way. I, I find it boring, and it's also exhausting. If you do it for effect, it's exhausting. If it's for real, it's another story. But I'm trying to find out why you hate Trump. And I'm, I'm calling uh, on callers to call in and tell me from their heart now not why you think you should hate him. We've had a few calls in the first hour. Some made a point, some didn't. There was just a generic feeling that they didn't like him. And I think many people will soon come to understand that a lot of the hatred or animus towards Trump is generated by very profound organizations, profoundly affecting how you think. Groups called Resist are funded by George Soros. And they put out propaganda on a daily basis, having you hate Trump for things he hasn't even done. A gay man called and said, well, well, he's against gays. I don't know where that's seen. I don't know. Educate me how he's against gays. Show me how that becomes the number one issue in America. Show me why sexuality should be the most important issue in the world, because I, for the life of me, could care less. I have declared myself to be a sexual libertarian at least 10 years ago. Meaning, if it's between consenting adults, I truly have to look the other way because, A, they don't care what I think, and, B, I don't think it's the government's business to control your sexuality. And, uh, C, just leave the children alone. You, you cross the line into children, that's another story. So aside from that, what do you hate him for? And that's what I'm asking you to call him about. Why do you hate Donald Trump? Another topic is, should class action lawsuits be banned? Class action lawyers be tried under RICO? And all of the assets that they have... Uh, attached in the last 30 years be seized by the federal government, even if the assets that they've gotten have been given to their children or grandchildren or, or into blind trust, should the money that class action lawyers have put away over these last 30 years of a free-for-all against the American people be seized by the federal government and dispersed into the tax base? These are some of the questions that we're talking about. There are many others, believe me. The secretive family making billions from the opioid crisis came out in Esquire magazine. They have a name. Sackler is the name. 
Uh, there's another couple of things I should mention that's important here. In polarized era, fewer Americans hold a mix of conservative and liberal views, says the Pew Research Center. In political values ranging from views of government and the social safety net to opinions about immigrants, race, and homosexuality, Americans are less likely than in the past to hold a mix of conservative and liberal views, meaning there's a real ideological divide right now, more so than in a long time. And uh, this is becoming a big issue. We're talking about that. There's another one I want to mention. Churches merge and close. We no longer live in Christendom. We really have to accept that that's a thing of the past. And so now churches are joining together because they're closing down. And it's the same with Reform synagogues. Two historic Reform Jewish synagogues, Temple Oheb, Shalom, and Park Heights, and Har Sinai Congregation, Owings Mills, have announced they will likely combine. There's a reason for that. And that is because the only groups that are expanding religiously are the Muslim groups, the Orthodox Jewish groups, and the fundamentalist Christian groups. The others, the, mid, the middle of the rotors in religion, are disappearing. And so they ask, how much has your congregation grown? How many visitors have you had? Would you attend your church if you weren't a member? The world is changing. The world always changes. The world has always changed. It always will change. Nothing is going to remain the same. The only constant is change. Everybody knows that. And we're living in a rapidly changing world. And I feel that as a talk show host, being on the front lines of this change, I have an obligation and a duty to air, let people air their grievances, number one, and try to tamp down some of the hatred in plain English. Whether I have always lived up to that is another question, because I haven't. In the years past, I did not. But in the years of today, meaning my show of today is different than my shows of yesteryear in many ways, e even though my politics have not changed. I want you to understand that. My politics of borders, language, and culture have been the same since 1994 when I began in radio. And I believe that the motto of the show, borders, language, and culture, still is the most powerful motto you can have in talk radio. I don't know of anybody in the media who has a better motto. In fact, I think many Democrats would like to see firmer borders, a single language that defines America, and uh, let us say reliance upon our culture. What is our culture? People say, Savage, I, really, I understand what borders are. I understand I'd like to see English as, as the only language that is permitted in government because we should not have a polyglot nation. It's a, divis a divisive thing to let people vote in six languages. You know, in San Francisco, you can vote in over six to eight languages, and that was created by the Democrats in the state, in the city, in order to make sure the illegal aliens could keep people like Pelosi, Feinstein, and at the time, Boxer, and the illegitimate in Sacramento in power. So that's why they allow the ballots in six or seven languages, which I think is outrageous. I'm an immigrant son, which I'll repeat over and over again. My grandfather had to learn English in order to vote. He could not vote in his native language. It would have, been, would have been unheard of. Who ever heard of a man coming to America, not speaking a word of the language, and being, a, a, being able to vote? How could they even know what they're voting for? Well, now you know how a bumbler like Pelosi stays in office. They don't even know who she is. They've just been told to check D. And it's either extreme D or more extreme D or crazy D or cowboy hat D. Everything on the D scale. Nothing on the A scale, certainly nothing on the R scale. It's a one-party system. So I've asked you, why do you hate Donald Trump? WABC Timothy, line two, why do you hate Donald Trump? Hey, Dr. Savage, nice talking with you. It's a pleasure uh, listening to your voice. It's a refreshing uh, perspective. Well, I don't can't say the word hate because I don't hate nobody, but I dislike how he went to Puerto Rico and was throwing out dry goods like, like uh, like you would throw your dog a treat. That was, to me, disrespectful. Even though those are U.S. citizens, he should have just did a little bit better on that. It's PR. So you feel, the, you feel the optics of him tossing out rolls of paper towel, blew it for, for him? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, just that did it alone? Just the tossing paper towels in Puerto Rico did it for you? Well, I'm not going to say he did it for me. It's just one of the few things where he just, to me, like he... Didn't really as much as he said make a make America great again. He just didn't stand up for the citizens, even though they might have had his own demise where they had bankruptcy and and they did this to their own good. But just to say, well, I'm going down there. He should try to like, you know, get, extend the handshake and say, folks, listen, 
I'm going to help. Well, him. look, I can get mad at him because he hasn't yet come out to Napa and Sonoma where we had the worst fires in history. He's not come out here. Why not? Because nobody in California voted for him. It's, it's, he wrote it off. Well, see, you know, you could you could argue he shouldn't have even gone to Puerto Rico for that matter. You could say he shouldn't have gone because they're getting they're getting billions in in, in U.S. aid. You know that. I know that he should went anywhere. There's a disaster or when people's in need, and he's an American citizen. America comes first, and I am an American citizen, seventh generation American citizen. All right, so you were offended by his behavior in Puerto Rico. That's good enough for the call, and I thank you. I'm I'm trying to touch on why he's hated so much. Is it brashness? Is it the optics of throwing paper towels? KTOX in Arizona. Tony, why do you hate Donald Trump so much? Oh, this is an easy one. Real easy one, Mr. Savage. Number one, my World War II uncle was murdered by an illegal alien gangbanger who'd been deported five times. He put a twenty two in his ear at an ATM for 60 bucks. I want that. So that that's why you hate Trump? Yeah, I'm going to tell Look, this MS-13 thing is a red herring, and I'll tell you why. They bust- wait, 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 sir. No, wait, look, please. I, I'm sorry for your loss, but you're blaming Trump for the guy shooting your uncle? I am blaming the way he is handling immigration right now. I want 300,000 guys at the border. I Forget MS-13. I want the punks that walk our streets every day and turn my beautiful little city in San Diego, where I was originally from, into Tijuana. You can't. You can't walk into a store unless... All right, so you're saying that Trump overpromised on immigration. He's not delivering. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. That's why you're the doctor. You hit it right on the butt. Drop. All right, I'm trying... Look, that's why I listen. I listen and I try to re- reflect on what you're, say- you're saying. <clears throat> so I just got it. You're saying he's not living up to his promise to stop the flood of illegal aliens is what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you. I got friends... All right. Let me send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I'm getting my first copy tomorrow, by the way. And uh, it'll soon be out. You'll hear me on television, radio. I know I'll be on one television show. Pretty much I know which one it's going to be because she was on the show and said it. You know, I haven't done television in 15 years. You have not seen Michael Savage on a TV show, I think, 15 years or more. It's hard to believe time flies. Here is a, how is that possible? Five best-selling books in a row and I'm not bookable. Why is that? Whatever. Who knows? But I will be on one show, and I'll bring the largest audience that has ever been seen on that television show when I'm on. And uh, God, faith, and reason is what we'll talk about. It won't even be politics, I'll tell you right now. No politics on that one. A political book. That's my, that's my, uh, it's my, I said I had to give something back to God who saved me and, you know, save me. Key word here is S-A-V-E-D, save me. And now that sounds preachy. I know people don't, ah, save them, bull crap. You know, he's selling something now. You know what? To each his own. You believe or you don't believe. It's not my business. I don't really care what people do as long as they leave me alone, you know, and you leave other religious people alone. I don't care. I don't like the haters who go after church groups. I don't like the haters who go after religious people. I don't like the haters who tell people that they have to bake a cake when they don't want to bake a cake. I believe in freedom in this country. That's freedom to sleep with who you want and freedom to bake a cake for who you want, as far as I'm concerned. That's what I believe in. In that sense, I believe in liberty, not in government authorized what you have to do. So we can go on. I don't know if people want to, you know, talk about this. I mean, the lines are full on why you hate Trump. I'll take your calls for a little bit more, then we're going to move on. Okay, back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Sure are a changing. Welcome back to the program. One of the things I enjoy the most about my program is the crossover audience of people who probably disagree with my politics in the main or mainly in many, many areas. But for some reason, they like the show. I don't know what it is they like me, the voice, the fact that I'm like the uncle in their family that they used to have that no longer exists. The guy who would come to dinner 
you'd have a family dinner in, in, in years gone by in America, and I don't mean so long ago. That family always got together Sunday night for dinner. It was so traditional. And there was your uncle, your Uncle Mike. And y- you couldn't believe this guy. Everything he said you disagreed with. And you'd argue with him. As you ate, you didn't hate him, but you argued with him. But you admired that he could support his arguments, and you still disagree with him. And then you couldn't wait for the Sunday dinner to be over. And then by Wednesday, you were looking forward to arguing with Mike again. I'm that uncle. <laughs> that's the, that's kind of the role for many people. But then there are a, a cadre, and I mean a large one, of people who hang on my every word and agree with everything I say. Then I suppose there's a large group of people who hate everything I say, but they listen out of, I don't know what it is, like drawing in air on a, like you have a tooth that's bad, like a cavity and you suck air out on it just to get the headache. You know, like some people do that. They listen to me just to get a headache. I don't understand that one. If I don't like someone, I don't listen to them. If I tune into a show and I hear a guy go into a certain direction, I turn it right off. I do that myself. So I try to avoid the pitfalls of the third rail of my own radio show. Today I've asked the question of why do you hate Trump because I, for the life of me, don't know where the hatred's coming from. I think a lot of this is programmed robotic behavior by people who have been told to hate Trump. It's cool to hate Trump. They hang around with people who assume everyone hates Trump. They talk amongst themselves and they whisper and nod, I hate him, you hate him, we hate him, and that unites them. It makes them smart to hate Trump, and I don't know why. That's what I'm trying to figure out. KSFO, Steve, why do you hate Donald Trump? Well, I'm a proud man. I don't like to admit this, but I, I dye my hair, okay? I'm 50 years old. I color my hair. And what I hate about Trump is I've tried, I've gone everywhere I can to try to find I, I like to have my hair color the same as his, okay? And I can't find his hair color. And every time I get close, it seems like his hair changes. Have you noticed that? So you're saying it's based on the color of his hair dye? Yes, I can't. I want my hair to look like his, and I can't find the right mix. <laughs> now, now you're pulling my leg. This is just a joke, right? But, but politically, why do, you dis- why do you hate him? I love Trump. You love Trump, but you just hate his hair, his hair color because you can't match it. Right. Yeah, but he doesn't wear a wig, does he? No. So why why does a guy like Howard Stern, who allegedly, reportedly, allegedly reportedly wears a wig, how does he get away with it? Well, because he never lets anybody touch it. Would anybody want to touch Howard Stern's wig, if it is a wig, in fact? No, I doubt it, but, you know, there's ways around it. <laughs> okay, thanks for the call. All right, well, okay, now people are getting cute. Should I move on to another topic, like something boring, like the fall of Rome? I'm not sure where I'm going to go when I come back, but it's not going to be here. we got a few more haters. I really need a hater, a visceral, visceral on the Savage Nation. Otherwise, I'll move on to all the topics today and some great sound bites. Uh, I'll talk about Ray Donovan. It got bad again. Bad writer. This is the problem with these series. They go from good writers to bad writers. Last night, a stiff. They brought her back again. The the dying dead wife. Why? Can't they bury her already? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Trending now on the Savage Nation, trending, how do I know it's trending, is Mad Hatter says White House filled with white supremacists. Okay, let's leave it at that. The woman with the crazy plastic hat. You know who I'm talking about. I mean, she is so digging her own grave. And any Democrat who joins this lunatic, this Mad Hatter, in attacking the White House as white supremacist, is frankly killing their own party. It is the stupidest direction I've ever seen. Just eating lunch during the break. Chinese food, of course. What can I do? Take out. <clears throat> so now soy sauce has gluten-free soy sauce. GF. Flip over the package. Get out the magnifying glass. Ingredients, water, soybean, salt, sugar, cornstarch. Already it's poison, just with that in it. But then at the bottom it says, 
this soy sauce is made from soybeans that were not genetically engineered. Do you think that matters to me? What do I care whether the soybeans were genetically modified? We're all genetically engineered. Everyone listening to the show is genetically engineered by the parents. The father selected the wife to have the child that he thought would be the best child. That's genetic engineering. The woman picked the man based upon characteristics that she thought would produce the most viable children. She's been genetically engineering in her own way. Well, what is wrong with this country? Everything you eat is, everything you look at is genetically engineered. Every fruit tree is a genetically engineered fruit tree. You look at wheat. Wheat started as a grass in Mesoamerica eons ago. Just a grass with small, tiny seeds. And the Central Americans at that time started to hybridize the grasses. And so they crossbred grasses that had the largest seeds with other grasses that had large seeds. And over and over and over again, they crossbred the grasses with the largest seeds to produce corn. You understand how that works? That's called genetic engineering. Now you say, but it's not the same as doing in a laboratory. Why not? Why is it not the same as doing in a laboratory? Everything you eat is probably genetically engineered in terms of its evolution. Every fruit tree that you look at is genetically engineered through crossbreeding. They would select, uh, an apple would be selected based upon which apples were most pest resistant, which were most resistant to mold. And they would keep breeding, breeding, breeding until you had a pest resistant apple. It's the same with human beings in many ways. If you select someone based upon the children you want to have, well, I see most people don't think that way. That's kind of a uh, borderline on something else. It's like eugenics. But there are people who select mates based upon the children that they want to have. You do know that, don't you? Well, you say it's not going on. It is going on. People get pictures of the baby in the womb. If they don't like its eye color, they terminate the per- pregnancy sometimes. They don't like the, the sex of the child, they terminate the it's crazy what we're living in now, brave new world. Well, let's go back to why you hate Trump. That's more juicy. Mike on KKOH in Reno, why do you hate Donald Trump so much? Well, the bottom line is Donald Trump needs to own up to some of the maturity expectations as a brand-new president of the United States. I mean, he's wasted so much time bickering, fighting like a high school girl, and it, it masks the fact that he is truly trying to address American politics and issues in America, but... When you have so many sideline, judgmental children as American citizens sitting back listening to the President of the United States for inspiration, for some kind of mentorship, and they're watching him on Twitter, acting embarrassingly left and right, it, it breeds hate in their heart. It sets them aside. It, it takes politics away so far away from their minds. So you're saying stylistically, you, you know, you, Trump is with, you don't like Trump stylistically mostly. I, I, that, that's the start of it. That's just the very beginning, stylistically, truly. I mean, if anybody can sit back that they, you know, and honestly say that they expect and admire Donald Trump as a person, they've got to be lying to themselves. They've got to be kidding themselves. You know, you, wouldn't, you were just talking about, you know, the uncle that you have at your table, the guy you want. You know, I, and the truth is, is, yeah, Dr. Savage, I would love to have you at my table any given day of the week to sit and argue, but Donald Trump would just, would just make you want to slug him, wouldn't he? Just from the embarrassing, ridiculous things that comes out of his mouth before he even thinks, if he even came up with those thoughts himself. Mike, who did you vote for? And I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Who did you actually vote for? Uh, you know, if that's, I did vote for Donald Trump. You know, and then wow, that's where I, whoa, whoa, <laughs> yeah. that's what I was. That's what I was afraid of. I hear as much disappointment as I do anger. Yeah, and, you know, that's it's hard to wake up in the morning with a smile on my face and, and, and recollect the, the, the decision I made as, a, you know, as an American patriot, as somebody that believes in American politics and believes in the voting process. It really is. It's hard to wake up and, 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 and accept the fact that this is what we're left with. But, you know, at the end of the day, if there was some kind of possible way under God's big blue sky to take it back, I truly would. I promise you I would. If there was to take what? my vote away oh you know wow you you really have uh, an anger towards him (laughs) and and it's you know that's that's a common consensus i'm getting from a lot of people in my family and friends that really you know we voted for donald trump wholeheartedly and now you know and it's not just television it's not just television and the the you know grass rattling snakes on the left that give you the 
you know, their opinion uh, is coming from their depths of their soul. It's, it's not that that's changed anything in our mind and hearts. It's, it's the realization of the, the childish, toddler-like behavior that we're really, truly, actually dealing with when it comes to Donald Trump. And for us, hardcore, real America-loving people, he has shown up as an embarrassment. You know, he, he's, a, he's a football team without a starting quarterback, and this is what we're left with. Wow. Boy, you really, you really have it. You really have it for your, for your viewpoint. I'm not going to argue if I can avoid arguing. I'm really wanting to have people vent. You know, but I see this going on. A lot of Trump's voters are so angry at him for having backtracked on what he promised for his juvenile behavior. Uh, and I can prove that something's going on in the negative here. There's a guy on Fox News who is a bootlicker. You know who I'm talking about, right? Correct. Mike, Mike you, there's a guy on Fox News who, who's his number one bootlicker and apologist. You know, we don't mention his name, but you know who I'm talking about, right? Well, if you say his name first. <laughs> All right. That guy... That guy's ratings have plummeted. And what was embarrassing for me was to see the president of the United States distracting the world and saying, that guy has great ratings. I thought that was the stupidest thing a president has ever done. Have you ever heard of a president glorifying a supporter in the media for having good ratings? Have you? I have never heard of that. And that comes down to the mentality that Donald Trump is first and foremost, walking with in his everyday life. His mentality is focused on ratings, focused on his image. In the uh-huh. <laughs> well, here, here's my problem with that particular guy. That guy is misleading the president in many ways. That guy is an is a um, obsessive tweeter many times a day, and I believe he controls or, excuse me, influences a lot of the things that come out of Trump's Twitter feed. I think it's because he talks to that guy far too often and that guy is not that smart he's a good entertainer and a good actor a very very successful man in television radio and as a property owner you know he owns about 12,000 apartments did you know that I did not know that I oh yeah you're not supposed to mention that because he's Joe Sixpack surprising. you're not allowed to mention that see this is the problem with a lot of what you hear in the media is a lot of people are cashing in on government uh, funding through things that they own, and then they get up and pretend that they're anti-government. Very interesting what's going on out there. And it's all going to come out in the laundry, I can guarantee you. Are you are you a man who's faithful at all to God? I mean, you, are you into religion? I am. Yes, sir. Yes, I am. I'm a proud Christian. Would you read God, Faith, and Reason, even though it's not aimed at converting anyone? Uh, yes, sir, I would. Yeah, I definitely, I would definitely read anything that came off of your fingertips, Dr. Savage. I definitely would. Well, what? you got a cop, you got a company flying out your way. The first copies were delivered today to the publisher. Frankly, I can't wait to see it. I'm getting it by overnight tomorrow. I really can't wait to see how it's typeset and what it looks like. I've worked on this book a long time. Like, uh, it's an incorporation of my whole life of uh, wandering and wondering and this and that. We'll see how it looks when it's finished. God, faith, and reason. We'll see where that one goes. If there's room for God in the new world, we'll find that out. If there's room for God in the bookstores, I'm sure there is. So we got more people who want to talk about this, and I guess we should take them. WABC, Tim, why do you hate Donald Trump? Uh, is, that me, is that me, Dr. Savage? He better be, because I'm talking to you. Oh, my name is Ted, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm a 50-year-old conservative Republican, and I was so enthusiastic when he started to run. I couldn't bring myself to vote for him because I thought, I thought he was a disgusting human being, and I just didn't like the way he spoke, the, the, the divisiveness, but I couldn't. I, I was a never a Hillary person. So when, when he won, I was excited. I was enthusiastic. But Dr. Savage, when a man speaks, I can't believe what a moron he is. He puts his foot in his mouth constantly, and I listen to the media. I, I would never form my opinion based on what the media says. It's just embarrassing. And he's bragging about calling families of fallen soldiers. He's br he brags about everything. That's why he's become a target of that one phone call. It's, it's disgusting. Hearing him speak makes me cringe when he's not on teleprompter. And I'm sure you have to feel the same way. So you feel Trump's going to be a one-termer? Oh, my God. I, hopefully. I mean, 
I, I wanted I wanted a change, Doctor. I really wanted a change. But I, I'm hoping he gets impeached and Pence will take over. Because I think the man's dangerous. I mean, tweeting against a lunatic in North Korea taunting a man that has nuclear weapons? <laughs> Okay. All right. I can see you're a strong believer in, in your beliefs, which is interesting. I'm getting really emotional calls today. I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate. I really am. I love this country. I'm an American first. I love this country. I love the, the, diff, the diversity in this country. But God, Michael Savage, every time he talks, he divides people. He's just, honestly, the guy's a moron. How, how could he be a billionaire? I was convinced there has to be smart somewhere that's going to come out. Well, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. I don't believe you're correct in calling him a moron. I don't think he's stupid at all. I think he's as, I think he's as clever as a fox in what he does. And I think it's part of his his ability to, to defeat his enemies by using a certain uh, style of doing it personally. But I can understand where you're coming from. I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Yeah, nothing is more essential than protecting your home. We all know that. But getting traditional home security can be a very, very difficult task. And I do have a better way to protect your home with Simply Safe Home Security. Ask anyone locked into a long term security contract. They're on the hook for three years, 45, 55 bucks a month. Well, then ask someone who's had a system hardwired in their walls and what the installation costs them, right? Simply Safe is the way to go. It got rid of everything that makes home security a hassle. You see, they make it very easy for you. No long-term contract, no obligations. It is award-winning home security. Tech Magazine seen that called Simply Safe, Better Smarter Home Security. Your home is protected around the clock with 24-7 professional monitoring. If there's trouble, they will send police. And what does it cost? Just 15 bucks a month. That's it. $15 a month for Simply Safe, which is three times less than what the other guys charge. No hidden fees. So write this down. Protect your home today. You can go buy Simply Safe at your local Best Buy and have your home protected by tonight. You hear that one? Or go to simplysafesavage.com for a special 10% off. You got it? Simplysafesavage.com, 10% off your system. Simplysafesavage.com. Well, I'm going to continue on with this for the finish of the hour here on the show. I've asked people who voted for Trump or didn't vote for Trump to call the show because for the life of me, I think a lot of the animus towards Donald Trump is a, a form of mass hysteria. It is sort of a an assumption. Oh, we hate him. We all hate him. Everyone hates him. Well, you, everyone doesn't hate him. And I'm asking people to call to tell me why they hate him. Curtis W. L. W. I. Radio in Alabama. Curtis, why do you hate Donald Trump? First of all, I don't hate him. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I use a different terminology. I I don't like his attitude and personality, the way he treats people, for one. Uh, for an example, the way he responded to the fallen soldier's wife this morning. Instead of taking the high road like a decent person would, let her, this lady lost her husband, sir, didn't he? Didn't she? Hello? I'm, I'm saying let let her off the hook. I'm not following what you're saying. No, 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 no. I said she lost her husband, okay, Miss Johnson. Oh, 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 okay. She came, she came on the TV this morning and explained her side of the story. Okay. Within 15 minutes, here come 45. You know, we call him 45 because he's not showing himself as being presidential right now. Uh, 45 came on, his little tweeted deal, and said, uh, you know, basically that she lied. You know, he's telling his side of the story. Instead of taking the high road and saying, ma'am, you lost your husband, you know, uh, you know, I may have said it a different way or uh, with a, a little bit aggressive. Cause I speak a yeah, or, or he just could have ignored it. He just could have let it already but, die but, out. But he, he should apologize to her and say, ma'am, I'm sorry about the Well, I, I disagree with you. I personally think that her and the congresswoman need to knock it off already and stop using that dead man as, as uh, let us say, bait to try and draw Trump in. They know he's got a short fuse. 
They know he can't let anything go. And it's a way to bait him, and he's, he's taking the bait. That's the real problem here. It's not good for the military. It's not good for America to see this going on. I agree with you on that one, Curtis. So I'm glad you listened to my show. I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason if you agree to read it. I will read it. But let me finish, sir. Uh, my point is, sir, if you and I, if we say something to someone and they took it a different way that, than you meant it, uh, it's the big person and big boy place to say, hey. All right. What you say is, you know, that's uh, look, I'm sorry you took it that way. That's not what I meant at all. But you see, I think that what he said has been said to other widows at other times, not only by Donald Trump, but by others who delivered that horrible message. He, it, you know, it's the tone in which you say things that matters as much as what you are saying. Stay on the line. If you say he knew what he signed up for, but it's always terrible when it happens. That's different than saying, ah, he knew what he was signing up for. I don't think he said it in that sarcastic way. And I think this congresswoman ought to be censured for capitalizing on this dead man's life. How do you like that? The Mad Hatter is the one who is the problem here, not Donald Trump. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I have friends that say, oh, don't use social media. See, I don't call it tweets. The tweeting is like a typewriter. And, you know, they're well-crafted. I was always a good student. I'm like a person that does well with that kind of thing. And I doubt I'd be here if it weren't for social media, to be honest with you, because uh, there is a fake media out there. I get treated very unfairly by the media. And I have a tremendous platform. I think I have 125 million people between Twitter and uh, Instagram and all of them and Facebook, mm. I have a tremendous platform. So, so, so when somebody says something about me, I'm able to go bing, 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 and I take care of it. The other way, I'd never be able to get the word out. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you think the president should continue tweeting or stop tweeting? Well, okay, that, that's almost a rhetorical question because you can answer it either way and you'd be right. Meanwhile, North Korea is threatening... Uh, the neighbors of North Korea so great that Japan, Japan, the defense minister of Japan, Onodora, said just today that the threat from North Korea has grown to a critical and imminent level. I'll tell you the truth. I don't go to sleep one night anymore without fearing I'm going to wake up to seeing either Guam, Japan, or Hawaii smoldering. I believe that that monster in North Korea is so deranged that he is just liable to launch and figure Trump will do nothing about it. You know, if you want to think of how a crazy man thinks, you say Hitler, how did Hitler think? You say, uh, well, just take any dictator, your favorite dictator. They do not think about the consequences of their behavior. They could care less how many people die so long as they have the power to exert over others. This... This fool, I, I shouldn't even say fool, this is a very dangerous man. Remember, he is a third-generation mafioso in Korea. He is the most dangerous man on the, pla on the planet. The man has never worked a day in his life. The man has never created anything. He's never created anything anybody ever wanted or needed. He inherited a nation that was ruled not by an iron fist, but by a fascist fist. Fish, fist fascist fist. Fascist fist. His grandfather started the prison state of North Korea. His father inherited the prison state. And now this crazy man has, um, apparently has a hydrogen bomb at his disposal. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Just play out the scenario in your head. 
crazy man Kim Jong mentally ill on obliterates Guam from the planet, literally bombs it and disappears. Tell me what Trump would do. He's thinking the same thing. Don't assume that they can't run war games. They do. They know Trump is a bluffer. That they know already. They've, they've seen a hundred times he's bluffed, and they know he's an intimidator, and they know he wrote the book on winning through intimidation, book from the 70s that Trump didn't really write, but he lo- runs his life on winning through intimidation. And he backs people down by threatening them with lawsuits or whatever. They know all of this. You know all of this. So now, if you're if you're Kim Jong Un and you want to prove to the world you will do what you want to do and you want to be a nuclear state, you want to be a nuclear nation, and you're going to do what you want to do. What would what would happen if he blew up, God forbid, Guam, where we have a um, an, an, an air force base? The B 52s come out of Guam. What would Japan do if he blew Hokkaido off the map? Tell me what would happen. Do you understand that we're playing with a deranged man who has never, ever been checkmated in his entire life since infancy? If he wanted to have someone killed as a child, he had them killed. If he wanted to rape a girl, you think Harvey Weinstein is bad? Do I have to finish the paragraph? Think of Kim Jong-un as a thousand Weinsteins rolled up into one, one bundle. Does that work for you? It's been written that he had teams go out and look for the prettiest girls in schools and bring them to him so he could do what uh, pigs and monsters do in those places. So I'm asking you, you don't think it's possible to wake up one morning like that? Well, well, Japan does. Japan does. And what would Trump do, tell me? What would Trump actually do at that point? I don't know what he would do. What, he's going to obliterate North Korea off the planet? I don't, I don't think so. Think of what the generals would say. We have the B-52s ready to go, and what we're going to do, drop atomic bombs on North Korea, and then what happens? The minute that happens, North Korea launches, what is it, 120,000 artillery shells every few seconds at, at South Korea and kills a few million people in South Korea, and we drop nuclear weapons on North Korea, and it brings China into a world war. They know that, in, in many ways, they know that Trump is, uh, is trumped on this they understand that and that's what worries me is that i don't know how to stop this other than china stepping in and taking care of the thing which is what they should have done a long time ago but as i've said for many years i said the same thing from one man's opinion only i have no inside knowledge i believe north korea is china's junkyard dog i've been saying it for three years and this dog doesn't bark unless the owner in the junkyard pulls his chain so they use him as a, a barking dog to frighten the world and get him off their back. That is, China uses him. The, he wouldn't last a day if China wanted him gone. Do you understand that? Not one day. So what's China doing here? They're trying to, they're trying to back Trump off from talking tough and acting tough on trade. It's that simple. Whether it's currency or it's dumping garbage on our shores or not paying tariffs or not being tariffed themselves. Uh, that's what they're doing here. It's all a trade war, and they're using the, this guy to to back us off is how I see it. Now, that's a big topic. So we have some other sound for you in the third hour in the Savage Nation, as well as uh, why you hate Donald Trump, which was hours one and two. I have some wonderful sound that you should listen to. Nancy Pelosi should be removed, should be removed under the Pelosi Amendment, which currently doesn't exist. There is a 25th Amendment, which could be enacted to remove a president who is incapable of carrying out the office. That really means if they become totally insane or they get a heart attack or a stroke, that's what the 25th is for. But thus far, neither a senator nor a congressperson can be removed, no matter how deranged they are. And everyone knows Pelosi is is deranged. They also know she's getting brain freeze. Listen to her right now, confusing the word Robert Mueller by calling him Robert Mother. Here's clip three. Listen to this. Well, it... it First of all, what what does mother? Where does mother take that? Sure. Uh, mother. But his uh, his uh, burden of proof mm-hmm. is different than what it would be in the Congress of the United States, and people should know that. That yeah. he's has a, it may be a, he could re- go to a criminal investigation of some of the people he's investigating. What we're doing is saying th- th- what all right, the, let's the enough. You know, it's, it's pathetic. Of, it's sad. A sane party would have removed her. A sane party would have removed the Mad Hatter from Florida. The Mad Hatter would have gone with the plastic cow, cowgirl hat. She would be gone. Personally, you know, it would be very easy to the, for the Democrats to, to take the House back, 
during midterms because of this satisfaction in this country, not only amongst Democrats, which is a given, but amongst Republicans who voted for Trump who are not very happy either. There's not a big support base for him right now. But because of the Mad Hatter with the plastic cowgirl hat, because of the hatred that comes out of Pelosi's mouth and the brain freeze, because of the -the around-the-clock Trump bashing, I'm not so sure the Democrats are going to take back anything. I think they're going to be lucky if they hold on to what they have. Here's an example, for example, of someone named Sherrod Brown. What state is he from? Uh, Rhode Island, right, if I remember correctly? The little state that could. Here's Sherrod Brown, who is a very wealthy white man, using the white card again in 01. You walk into the White House and it looks far too much like a a retreat for Goldman Sachs executives. People closest to the president whispering in his ear all want to do tax cuts for, uh, want want to do trickle-down economics, big tax cuts for the wealthiest people in the country and hope it trickles down. And they say it's budget neutral and they say it'll raise wages. It's never done that throughout history. Another another demagogue faking it. He is a rich white man who lives off other rich white men, making, making believe he hates white men. This is the latest stupid game that they're playing. How, how did that happen? I mean, where did it come that rich white men who live off the benefact that the beneficence of rich white men attack white men? How does that work? And then he goes on, this guy, Sherrod Brown. And he's he's a, a very, very important man, believe me. Very, he's so important. Here's clip two from the important man, Sherrod Brown. I agree that Steve Bannon is a white supremacist, right, right. and Stephen Miller seems to be, and I know right, that, right, right, right. Um, studies have shown that they have their allies sprinkled around the White House. I, right, 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 I, right. I think that, you know what, what's really interesting about this, Dan, is when the president attacks people like that, he almost never calls them by All name. All right, it's enough already. He, he, I, I, They're losing. See, guys like Sherrod Brown are actually defeating the advancement of their own party. I'll tell you right now, the smartest amongst them is Gavin Newsom. Now, he is a liberal, there's no question about it. But Gavin Newsom was quoted about two months ago as saying this constant around-the-clock Trump bashing is terrible for the party. We must have a positive message. We must actually do something other than attacking Trump. But you don't hear that anymore because the vermin in the media, I'm sorry to have to use that phrase again, the vermin in the media live off division. If there was no division, if there was no crime, if there was no rape, if there was no war, the vermin in the media would would not have a job. The phone number here is 855-407-282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. John Kelly um, is almost, I guess you could say he, he was a puppet of the president, and what he was trying to do was divert the attention away from the president this is the man onto me, and he basically just lied on me. And I don't, like, I don't appreciate people lying on me. accusing of molestation? And that's what he did. Uh, what do you I've lie? been Wait, in politics he, he, a long Is she saying that John Kelly pulled a, a Harvey Weinstein on her? Did she just say that John Kelly lied on her? I never heard that phrase before. It just shows you what kind of education you don't need to be a congressperson. You know, it's enough, enough already. Attacking not only John Kelly, who's a great American patriot, from someone who wears a fake cowboy hat is enough already. I'm sick of it all. So it's over. No more. KFAQ, Oklahoma, line four. What's your topic? Fire away. Go ahead. Uh, hello, Michael. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, with regard to Kim Jong-un, I had an incident in my life where I was faced with a life-or-death situation and a fellow who was essentially insane. And what what you must do in a circumstance like that is decide what has to be done, and then without wavering, there can't be any politics. Uh, You have to do what needs to be done, and your concern is absolutely warranted. We don't know what he will do. I mean, obviously he is insane, but there must be serious action taken if he were to strike. uh, Well, Japan is saying that it's reached a critical point right now. 
They're close to him. They suffered from a nuclear bomb. They lost at least 100,000 people in two days. Japan is freaking out right now because they know the man is insane, and he's just liable to launch against Japan. So something must be done. What can be done, though, Michael? Well, that's why it takes a person in the White House that is, that is uh, I, I would, would hope, and, and I'm not saying this uh, criticizing Donald Trump, but that's why I would prefer a military background person to be president. In the military, you understand what I was forced to learn, that there are people that will murder you. No, no, I hear you. I heard the first part of your sentence very clearly. I know what you're intimating, believe me. But but how do you get a, how do you get a thing like that done without without killing a hundred thousand people around them? Tell me how. Michael, well said. But that is the problem in the world today. You you have people who have weaponry now that can incinerate a hydrogen bomb can can murder over over a hundred thousands of people, and so you have to have a president that is willing to take the necessary retaliation. And what what I would say, President Trump should should do is if it escalates anymore, he needs to contact China and Russia and tell them, say, hey, look, I have no option. My hands are tied. If he strikes, I have to strike back. And Well, here's the problem. Because of the mad dogs on the left, because of Congressman Mueller, because of Nancy Pelosi, because of uh, Hillary Clinton, and the constant rhetoric about Russia being Hitler, uh, Putin being Hitler, Russia being Nazi Germany, Russia has now moved over to the side of North Korea. Do you know that? They were our natural ally until these mad dogs started to mischaracterize Russia and Putin, and they've turned Putin completely against America. He's no longer our friend, and that is because he's been called Hitler by Hillary and also uh, because of the nonstop lies from Mueller about Russia collusion. So right now Russia has said they will back North Korea. An analysis, Michael, and that's the problem. That's why we cannot have divisiveness in our military. That's why the military must maintain its its single sight on what is, is necessary to be done. But from a military point of view, if Trump took a preemptive strike on Kim Jong-un for the, for the safety of, let's say, a few hundred thousand people, you know Trump would be called the worst person in the history of the world. You know that. Yes, but, Michael, sometimes that's necessary. See, I was wrestling for a loaded gun, my loaded gun, and I was going to lose it. So I had to make a decision in a split second. Do I give up the gun to, to an insane person and, and throw myself on his mercy? And that's what you're in a position with North Korea. If it is imminent, if, if by intelligence, proper intelligence. Okay, you're fading out. Well, Japan says it's imminent. Japan says he can launch at any time. This is a very serious business now. This is not a joke anymore. I mean, this is very, very serious. It's on the brink. And uh, it's very nice that Trump gave a Medal of Honor to a Vietnam vet in the middle of all of this. I have no idea why all of a sudden a Vietnam vet would be given a, a Medal of Honor at this time other than to cover up something. I know you don't want to hear that, but everything is political. Everything is about you know, how it looks. I would rather see some action against North Korea to stop this madman before hundreds of thousands of people, if not more, die. And I'd like to know what can be done. I think it's a very important question, that we, which we continue to talk about during the course of this week's program on the Savage Nation. In the interim, I would like to direct you to michaelsavage.com, please. I'd like you to check out what I have written in God, Faith, and Reason, which will be out very shortly. I'm very close to launch. And uh, you can order a copy of God, Faith, and Reason and help drive it up to number one on Amazon or on barnesandnoble.com. There are other great stories. Our traffic has gone up threefold, 300%, since it became michaelsavage.com without a hyphen in it. It's no longer a hyphenated website. The traffic went up 300%. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Wave. World Series could be the hottest ever. 100 degrees expected for game one. 
Uh, I guess I won't sleep tonight thinking about that. I'm such an avid sports fan with what's going on in the world. I can't wait to see a bunch of men running around in striped suits uh, hitting a ball. But okay, that's the world I live in. Sports crazy. Here on the West Coast, another heat wave. We thought it was over. Now it's 20 degrees hotter than normal. I guess it's that old global warming again. No, not. It was hotter actually in 1870. But don't tell that to the fake environmentalists who don't study history. I saw an article on the secret family making billions from the opioid crisis, and I had heard of the Sackler name before, and the article was intriguing. It was in Esquire magazine, and it heads, it headlines this way. You're aware America is under siege, fighting an opioid crisis that has exploded into a public health emergency. You've heard of OxyContin, the pain med to which countless patients have become addicted. But do you know that the company that makes Oxy and reaps the billions of dollars in profits it generates is owned by only one family? And the family is called the Sacklers, S-A-C-K-L-E-R. If you've been in any museums in America or around the world, you will see Sackler's name all over everything. The Sackler family, family is legendary in museum circles for their pursuit of naming rights. There's a Sackler staircase at Berlin's Jewish Museum, a Sackler escalator at the Tate Modern, a Sackler crossing in Kew Gardens, a popular species of pink rose is named after a Sackler. So is an asteroid. The, new in, the newly installed Sackler courtyard at London's Victoria and Albert Museum is the latest addition to an impressive portfolio. The Sackler name is no less prominent among the emerald quads of higher education. So, uh, did you know there's one family that controls the, the oxy business? You didn't know that, huh? And you thought it was the guy in the ghetto who was the drug dealer, hmm? <laughs> just shows you what you know, and it just shows you what public relations can do for a family. I saw a, po- a number of questions over the weekend in the New York Post from the former CEO of National Public Radio, who told us all about liberal media bias like we didn't know anything about it. But he he posed some questions that I thought were interesting. Are you ready for them? The growing gap between uh, Dems and uh, Repubs. Immigrants today are a burden on our our country because they take our jobs, housing, and health care was one question. Poor people have it easy because they can get government benefits without doing anything in return was another question. The government today can't afford to do much more to help the needy, another one. Most corporations make a fair and reasonable amount of profit was another question posed to both Dems and Repubs, as were these. The best way to ensure peace is through military strength. Government regulation of business usually does more harm than good. These are all Pew research poll questions. Another two were government is always wasteful and and inefficient. And finally, homosexuality should be discouraged by society. And they show the changing responses amongst reds and blues. Now, I could ask you these questions, and I may do that later, but I'll tell you the question that's really bothering me because I've asked it of some people who are not Republicans, and they can't answer it. Maybe you can. Can anyone listening to this show tell me what Trump has done that makes you hate him so much? Because I can't understand it. I'll I'll say it again. I was in a bagel shop over the weekend. I've gone on two long bike rides. I've decided to live rather than just drift off into eternity. I always bicycle, but I'm doing much longer rides now. So anyway, I I get there early in the morning, and I'm having a bagel in my own quiet. Actually, I was having a Bialy, which is i never seen in San Francisco before. No one even knows what it is. Out here, they have sugar bagels, which they think are bagels, but they're not. So I had a Bialy with some salmon on it, a cup of coffee, and there was a nice couple. They said, keep up the good work. We love you. So we started to talk in this little bagel deli, and I said, can you tell me why they hate him so much? Can you? He said, I asked my friends who, quote, are liberals, and he said, they, they mumble, they can't answer me. He said, there's nothing specific. No one seems to have an answer. So I said, I'm going to do that Monday, which is because I, I need the answer. I want to know why Trump is hated so much. I know he defeated Hillary, and I know that that's part of the animus being driven by the vermin in the media. And I don't use that term lightly. I truly believe there are humans who are lower than insects. And I don't have to go into details, but when I see that it is the media 
that has single-handedly destroyed this society by dividing and conquering, by running the most despicable stories about anyone they can get their hands on. I will say to you that insects have done less damage to the society than most people in the media. So I ask you, is it all character assassination that is being inflicted upon Trump? What is it that he has actually done that generates so much hatred amongst his enemies? And I don't have the answer. Do you? Remember last week I went on a tear against the group of Orthodox Jews in Israel who won't serve in the military? But worse than that, they were rioting in the street. Well, I didn't know which group they were, and I have the names of the group. They are not as prominent as you may think. It's not all Orthodox who won't serve. It's only some of them. And they are not Chabad, by the way. They are a minority Orthodox fringe group in Israel that is disturbing the peace, cursing out soldiers. They have even been denounced by all the ultra-Orthodox head rabbis. And what's horrible here is that people around the world now think that all people dressed in black uh, are of the type that will not serve in the military. That is not true. Actress Jennifer Lawrence, star of The Hunger Games, the highest paid actress in the world, has harshly criticized Christians. This is from Mark Judge in CNS News. In an interview for the December edition of Vogue, the subject of Kim Davis came up. You may remember Davis is the Kentucky county clerk who went to jail for refusing to sign wedding licenses for gay couples. Lawrence's reaction is described by Vogue writer Jonathan Van Meter as the following. All those people holding their crucifixes, which may as well be pitchforks. So my friends, you have the power with the NFL to turn off the games, which you have done. Their ratings are in the toilet. You have the power to put your hats on forward and not go to the games, not watch them on television. You have the ultimate power. You are the consumers. You also have the power to say, you know, she's a good-looking girl and she's pretty and sexy and all that, but I hate her politics. She hates Christians. I'm through. I'm through. I will not watch anything Harvey Weinstein has ever made on rerun, and any time I see Jennifer Lawrence is in a movie, I click past it now. We're going to render her obscure. You have the power. You understand how this works? It works for me and everyone else in the media. We live and die by our reputation. Come back, America. Where did it go? When did liberals become fascistic and why? We're scraping for a piece of truth. And I told the story of seagulls and pelicans fighting over bread where they don't kill each other. They don't even kill each other over a scrap of bread. And yet look what happens in this country when a guy like Lawrence O'Donnell will kill the truth in order to try and push the needle on his failing uh, television show by calling Kelly a racist because he's Irish Catholic from Boston. It's hard to believe that Bill Gates doesn't step in and stop this madness. In the city with the dog, let me just do like talk. Jump in the car, take the dog chain. You got to remember what to take like to my apartment there. The dog food, the leash, uh, take a hamburger from the night before. Okay, get to the apartment. And I took took him for a walk and I saw the dead rat. I said this is I this rat was half the size of my dog. It was frightening. I never saw a rat that big. It was like bubonic plague level. Now, the state of California is in such a mess because of the liberalism that has destroyed this great golden state. It's a cesspool wherever you go. Any city is a cesspool. Broken roads, bums, fecal matter in the streets. I'm not making this up. I ran into a guy who was in the street. Guy comes up to me. He says, I'm the engineer from your old place. Blah, blah, blah. We talk. So I said, God, the streets have gotten dirty under this mayor and under this governor. He said, it's horrible. He said, you know, look at the streets. He said, that's human feces that's on the street. I said, where are the street cleaners? This is a public health hazard. What are we going to get, like fleas jumping off the rats now onto your dog or cat or onto your own sock? And the bums in the parks? They're defecating in the parks. They're shooting up drugs in the parks. Where's Feinstein? Where, where's uh, oh, Pelosi? That's a big trap for Donald Trump and lives in a sewer here that she created with her tolerance. Tolerance is a mental disorder because it's not tolerance at all. Scientists witness huge cosmic crash find origins of gold. I couldn't resist that story. I know it's hard for Torque Radio to do that one. But if you want to read it, it's on at michaelsavage.com. It's linked up from the big story. Because this is a huge story. Two months ago, scientists for the first, first time detected the ripples in space and time and the light produced and emitted during the same cosmic event 
which was the spectacular collision of two neutron stars. Now, I realize most of you just turn the radio off because it, it doesn't li bash liberals. Um, the discovery would soon reveal secrets of the cosmos, including how gold was created. Okay, that's interesting, the, the average person. Neutron stars form when massive stars explode in supernovas. I know you're already, your mind went null. When you heard neutron stars form when massive stars explode, most of you are on the level of uh, the Kardashians. So that already you went to sleep. 99% of you don't want to listen anymore. Neutron stars form when massive stars explode in supernovas are the smallest, densest stars known to exist. Those of you who are sports addicts who like the NFL have already tuned out. A teaspoon of a neutron star has a mass of about a billion tons. Most of you who watch the NFL don't know what a mass is, don't know what a billion tons is, except cocaine or gold. A teaspoon of a, new teaspoonful of a neutron star is so dense, it has a mass of about a billion tons. So when the neutron stars collide, which is known as a kilonova, an explosion occurs, and the crash generated a fierce burst of, fierce burst of gamma rays, and a gravitational wave in space, a, which was a, a faint little ripple. Now, what's amazing is this violent merger occurred 130 million years ago in a galaxy near our own, NGC 4993, and it was seen from Earth in the Hydra constellation, and it was the source of the gravitational waves that was detected here on Earth on August 17th. Listen to this carefully. The signal of this event, which occurred 130 million years ago, arrived on Earth after traveling 130 million light years. A light year is 5.88 trillion miles. Now, I realize if you watch the NFL, this is of no interest to you because there's no racial thing in it. You can't hate anybody by reading this. You don't even understand what that means. A trillion miles is not real to you. So, but the fact is, is that we're living in another world that we, we're not even aware of. I'll try to explain light energy to you and light waves and light years are the most interesting thing I ever studied when I was a young teacher, light years, light years away. I try to explain to little kids that if you're looking at a star, which is X millions of light years away or trillions of light years away, the light you are seeing on the earth right now from that star was emitted millions or trillions of years ago and it's only reaching us now. So kids would say, wow, what's that, Doc, Mr. Savage? That means that if someone on that planet or that star is looking at earth right now at you little kids they will not see you they will not see you for about a, a trillion years which means you're 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 eternal <laughs> there's your immortality I, I explain that to children some of them got it some of them didn't and that's the world we're living in if only the people were science literate if only the people in the media had even seventh grade levels of science the earth, the earth would be such a better place, but they don't. They don't even have a fourth grade level of science, you know? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. <laughs> We all know about the lunatic from uh, Congresswoman Frederica Wilson with the crazy cowgirl hat. I called her the Mad Hatter who, because she said the White House is filled with white supremacists. I mean, on the, on the face of it makes her a racist, to be honest with you. To say that the White House is filled with white supremacists is about as racially charged as you can get. So I called her a Mad Hatter on my Twitter feed and on michaelsavage.com. But, you know, I realize it's not limited to her. Here we have Pelosi who can't finish a sentence and she's not removed under the 25th Amendment because it doesn't apply to senators. But if she's not a Mad Hatter, I'd like to know who is. Then we have uh, another one, Sherrod Brown, saying the White House looks too much like a white supremacist operation. Another Mad Hatter. Is there anyone in the Democrat Party who should not wear a synthetic cowgirl hat? I think we should start a petition drive and raise money for these hats for them and send them to the Democrat Party because, frankly, they all need a cowgirl hat. They're all the same as Representative Frederica Wilson. They all wear the cowgirl hat. Now, while we're talking about that, I'm going to throw out a few others. Should class action lawsuits be banned 
And should class action lawyers be tried under RICO? Now, I know it's a loaded question because that's what I think should be done. I believe that any nation that permits class action lawyers to bring down and break companies based on almost nothing. I was thinking about the Johnson & Johnson talc case. A woman sued in one life hundreds of millions of dollars claiming that the talcum powder gave her ovarian cancer. Now, it was based upon, um, it was based upon false, false uh, testimony. A California judge tossed a $417 million talc cancer verdict against Johnson & Johnson. It was by a woman who claimed she developed ovarian cancer after using its talc-based products like Johnson's baby powder for feminine hygiene. The case was thrown out. Now, I believe lawyers who practice these class action lawyers are no different, in fact, much worse than the Crips of the Bloods. I believe class action lawyers are the true cr criminal class in America. I personally believe class action law, law should be changed so it doesn't permit to be a be, and number two because first of all most people get no money out of these deals the lawyers steal all the money no matter what the class is that you sign on you get pennies they get millions so it's a scam run by these huge law firms that litigate every company in the United States of America trying to break them into a settlement it's criminality and that's why I think class action lawsuits should be banned and I believe class action lawyers should immediately be indicted under RICO statutes and I'll go a step further all of their ill-gained money over the last 30 years from any and all class action lawsuits, whether it was given to their daughters, their grandmothers, or their grandchildren, should be seized by the federal government. You know, Nancy Pelosi and, and her uh, other mad hatters keep saying they want to impeach Trump, and then they want Trump gone. It's under the 25th Amendment that if a person's not mentally competent, I think a lot of them should be removed. But the problem is the 25th Amendment does not apply to the Senate, unfortunately. So... I think that we need a Pelosi amendment, something along the lines of a 25th for those in Congress who are showing clear signs of a lack of mental acuity, the inability to finish a sentence. Anyone exhibiting those signs should be removed under the Pelosi amendment. Savage.